Hey everybody, welcome to Mesa College where uh, we have video of the St. Augustine Saints arriving as we speak. Take a look at the Saints, Bert, as they uh, roll in. Uh, I can't help but notice very serious focus, <laughs> fo uh, a focused crowd as they uh, yeah. get ready to take on the Helix Scotties at a ball game that is not kicking off until 7.30 because there is a soccer game being played behind it. Mesa's College is playing soccer and they are not going to uh, give up the field until... So there was no JV game here today. I know, I was disappointed. I think they played yesterday. Helix won big. So, uh, uh, Bert, who's going to win this game between Helix <clears throat> and St. Augustine tonight? I might tell you a little bit later. All right, well, then, if you're going to be uh, proved to be obstinate, uh, let me go to somebody who's never obstinate. Let's go to uh, Maddie Sinclair up in the North County. Maddie, where are you tonight? Oh, uh, let's go to Brandon Stone. Excuse me, we'll go there first. I know he's at Sarah. Yeah. The, Paul, don't forget about me, babe. Don't forget about me. I am here at Sarah High School for the Jersey Mike City Game of the Week. Now i got to get this chatty Cathy over here, Charles James to focus. But that's why I like him, because he's always comfortable. Um, you got something special I want to talk about. Um, your freshman, Amari Ari, freshman, offered by BYU, and that's just not the end of it. Talk about what he means to your team to add to Moe's attack on the run. Um, Losing Raiden Hunter and Jaden Wickware and him coming in a fold, um, it, it gives us, uh, you know, it adds to what we do and it just makes teams play us more honest and they can't just key on Mo so much, um, having the, the one two attack with those guys. So he adds to where we left off um, last year in, in a positive way. The fun of you guys having won, I think, 15 games in a row quickly, what does it mean when you hear that to know that you've been a part of a team that can win that much? Uh, well, tunnel vision still. You know, and and you know, we we take one game at a time. It just so happens. I, I you know, when we're around, uh, I think around 13 wins, uh, we sat down. Me and Coach Jimmy and was like, hey, you know, it's 13 games straight. Like we didn't know. <laughs> and then um, and then the magic kept going. Yeah, and it just kept going. So you gotta love that. Yeah. Good luck tonight, Coach. I appreciate it. You got it going. Let's go to Maddie Sinclair. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Well, we are out here at Orange Glen High School as the Patriots are taking on the San Pasquale Eagles for the 45th annual Battle of the Bears. And this is dating back to 1972. Now, San Pasquale leads the Battle of the Bears, winning 29 times. Orange Glen has won 14 times with one tie. Now, the San Pasquale Eagles, who won the San Diego Section Division 5 championships, they return six starters on offense, including the league's Offensive Player of the Year, and who comes in at number 19 on our 2000. 2019 PPR Top 30 Seniors list. His name is Cale Patterson. You'll be hearing his name a lot. Now on the other side of the field, Orange Glen looks to take back the Bear Trophy for the first time since the upset in 2003. It's going to be a battle tonight, and you better believe we will have all of these highlights tonight on the Prep Big Skin Report, and we'll be showing you the Bear coming up in the 6 p.m. hour, but for now we're going to send it out south to Bo. How's it going? Hey, it's going great. Thank you, Madison. I'm here at Montgomery High School with head coach Freddie Dunkel. We talk about culture change. You guys obviously have done a lot here with that. And you guys are going to the San Diego State game tomorrow for just bringing the kids together, letting them enjoy the experience. Talk about that. Yeah, it's all about giving them the best football experience we can give the kids. And so anywhere from our team meals to our trips and field trips that we take to guest speakers coming in or to the game atmosphere, it's all about giving the kids the best football experience we can give them. Hey, there it is. It's a quick interview, but four D1 athletes at Montgomery High School, they're bringing that tradition, that mentality here to Montgomery High School, Aztecs to Aztecs, always and once forever. And that will do it here from Montgomery for the South Bay Game of the Week. We'll send it out to the east to Allison Edmonds. Thank you so much, Bo. We are here at Granite Hills High School, but not to watch Granite Hills. We are watching a matchup with Central and Christian. And speaking of Central, I am joined now by quarterback of the Spartans, De Niro Asuna. Talk to me last season, great season for you guys. Talk about how you're kind of building off of that into this season so far. Uh, we've just been working really hard and just grinding the same we did last year, just trying to get back to where we are. And what does this Christian team do well that, that's going to maybe be a challenge for you guys? Uh, they're really fast. They have a lot of speed, and they're, they're really disciplined, a really good team. And what have you been helping kind of teach your team this year in order for you guys to continue to be successful game after game? Uh, just to stay humble and take it one game at a time, not to get too uh, ahead of ourselves and too cocky. And lastly, how, how was the drive out here? It was, it was nice. It was simple, one hour and a half drive. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank Good you. luck tonight. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. And Paul will go ahead and send it back over to you. Allison, you just showed us why I like this show so much. Kid, uh, kid from Central, 
is being featured in the 28th TV market in the country, thanks to the Prep Tasting Report. Exactly. No, I don't think there's any other um, forum where you can do that. And you go out, you go out to Central or Central Valley. I mean, there's just not a lot of coverage. We don't get out there much ever. Uh, any any of the press. No. Does. So yeah. uh, I, I just uh, Allison, job well done. Just a quick reminder: it takes a army to put this show on the air. A very, as my boss would say, a very expensive army. But uh, and everybody, everybody not only brings you the highlights from the game, but they're also in charge of finding that interesting sidebar story that you might not know about. Something cool about your school's program that if it wasn't for the Hogcast that gets uploaded every Friday night, you might not know about it. We upload 25 to 30 every week of the season. Here's one of my favorite from a week ago, our viewing party correspondent, John Duran, with a look at the Tri-City football team. You guys are two on one, three games to the season. Tell me, how do you guys feel where you guys stand right now? Uh, well, the first two weeks were what we expected, but uh, this week we played a good team. Uh, we, they were... We, we prepared for them great, but uh, they were just more than we could handle right now, and we're going to clean that up. We got some injuries. Uh, some, some more dudes went down this game, but we're going to clean it up and get back to playing football like we know we can, and we're going to start winning games. Tough game, but, I mean, we're here at Grandstand Peaks, so an awesome crowd, awesome support. Tell me about the support here at Tri-City Christian. Uh, it's great. This year the crowd has been getting a lot more into it. Uh, it's great seeing everybody step up their game with that, and it's awesome being here with uh, all the support of all the families and cheerleaders and other football players. Uh, just after a game, just good to get over here and just hang out and connect with each other. That's another cool thing. <laughs> About the, about the prep picks report is the fact that everybody goes to their favorite haunt, be it a mom and pop pizzeria yes. or a private party, and they they watch. Remember parties. how much trouble you got in on Friday night after a high school football game? Oh God, yes, yes, I do. So, and now kids go home to watch as a group. You know, the, the highest compliment a mother ever pays me. She goes, <laughs> "Paul, it's the one night we don't have to worry about the family car." <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't want to think about that. All right, so uh, we, we we had Don Norcross in in the four o'clock hour. We were talking about the UT poll. We could also use the PPR poll, but I thought that was just as screwed up as the UT is. How does Helix jump to no number one over Saint Augustine when uh, the Saints are undefeated and the Scotties? Granted, they played a tough schedule, but they have a loss on their schedule. I, you know, you don't see often that number one loses and, and number two, which was Saints before, doesn't automatically take that spot. They stay at number two and get leapfrogged by, I think, five before. But, you know, they go by strength to schedule. I, I think, again, it doesn't mean much because in a few hours this is going to be irrelevant and there'll be a new number one. All right, so say this. Say Cathedral wins tonight yeah. and he, say St. Augustine defeats Helix. Mm -hmm. then, then it goes Saints, Cathedral, and then Helix falls to three, or does Carlsbad move up to three, assuming they win? Well, that becomes hard again because you can't drop Helix down uh, could, below could Cathedral. Helix, could Helix lost. lose this game tonight and fall all the way to four? I think so, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, I should, and uh, in the interest of uh, viewer uh, you know, transparency, I vote in the UT poll as, of course, the PPR poll. As I, Who was uh, your number one? I had it St. Augustine one, Helix two, Cathedral three. I like that. I like that. All right. So uh, we have 30 seconds. Could you this time please tell me who's going to win the game tonight? No, but what I will tell you is defense coordinator for Saints, probably the best in the county. Defense you talent. You say that when the Dons are here, then you say the same thing about the Dons defense coordinator. Well, he, he just like number one and two, he lost last week. He got moved <laughs> down and he got bumped up. All right. All right, so we're going to have much more pre-PR. and I guess now we're done at 5 o'clock, so now we have to get ready for 6 o'clock, right? Yeah. You're, at some point, we're going to get a prediction from you, right? Yeah. Next All right, hour. Uh, on behalf of Bert Grossman, the head coach of the Strike Force, my name is Rudy. You've concluded now two hours of the pre-PR. The 6 p.m. newscast is about to begin, and there will be more pre-PR in that, too.